Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a look at how we can 3D design a better chevron. So what's about to follow is a tale of my own hubris and me getting it about as wrong as you can get it. So if you want to hear about me realising I'm an idiot, carry on. And also along the way we'll talk a bit about making a better chevron. So this came to me from Ben, he's an admin of a group on Facebook that looks at 6 and 8mm 3D printing and he asked me how to do a chevron on Blender and I said well that's easy and went through this technique that we're going to look at first. So what I did is I just mesh, cube and then we're just going to scale this up slightly so we're going to try and make this chevron in this gap. So let's scale that up a bit and then S and Z to make that longer in the Z axis. So we've got something about here. And I said, cool, at this point it becomes relatively easy. We just need to break this up into sections. So I'm going to go into edge mode, control and R, and pick the number of chevron sections I want. Let's say something like that. And then we just need to rotate them. Now this is where things get a little bit annoying. Your blender will probably start off with it as a median point. And if you hit R, it's going to do this. Now we can fix this by changing it to individual origins where it's going to do that, but it still distorts it. If I come into x-ray mode, we can see this distorting the whole shape. And that's not what we want. But luckily the add-on mesh machine, which also is what creates this pie menu, is going to allow me to do this just by hitting Alt and R, and now this is going to not distort it. So I'm going to get this to about 45 degrees. We'll say somewhere around there. And then I've got a couple of options. So let's just Shift and D and bring one to the side. The option that I prefer is to come in here and press Ctrl and B on all of these edges, add a little width, and then I'm just going to press Alt and E and extrude faces along normals, and just extrude that in a little bit. Now what this gives is a nice chevron where we can put some ink in each of these gaps, and we're going to be able to paint each colour relatively easily. The other option we could do, if I just come back into face mode for this one, is select alternate face sets there, so that was just Alt and clicking, and then similar thing, Alt and E, and then extrude face along normals and bring those a little bit in. So we've got two options here, both of them work. Okay, so I've just colorized that so it gives you an idea of what these chevrons would look like. So that was me pretty happy with this. This is my way of making a chevron and it's right. So I told Ben the same thing and he said, yeah, I'm not really sure about this. And I did the worst thing you can do as a creative person. I didn't listen and went, nope, I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm not going to listen to someone else. Never do that. It always makes you look like a complete idiot, regardless if you're right or wrong. But when you are wrong like I was, it's really going to make you feel foolish. Now, it was later on that evening, as is often the case, where you're in that point between being fully asleep and fully awake, that I had a bit of an epiphany and I realised how wrong I was. This is not a particularly good chevron both from just a general point of view, but especially from a 3D printing point of view. Now, if I come in here, we get these edges that are relatively sharp here. They're gonna be a real annoyance to try and support, and they're gonna need supporting, which is really tedious. I mean, I guess we could print this upside down and it would be less bad, or we could have the chevrons going in the opposite direction, but either way, we don't like these. They're gonna cause some issues, and they're probably going to get damaged as we put the supports on them. Now I could do something about this, for example, I could bevel this bit and sort of start trying to fiddle with that, but this seems very tedious. The other issue is that there's some real variation in thickness here. While on each side it looks good, for example, that is the same thickness as that, which is nice, but if I then come on to the side, that is way thicker. So this isn't gonna look very nice, and that extends to the gap that I was gonna put my ink in. I've got a relatively wide gap here and a much thinner gap there. It's going to look pretty ugly. And then finally, if I come to this from this side, we've got these basically what look like stripes, which, okay, yes, that's what a chevron is, but they're flat, which makes it look really weird, like I'm just trying to paint a bee or something. So this is not a great chevron. What Ben was talking about was what we want instead. And he wasn't sure how to make this in Blender, so I'm going to go through that now. Let's just bring that back to my normal matte cap. So, similar start. Shift A, mesh, bring in a cube. I'm just going to delete that, we don't need it. And we're just going to scale this up a little bit. So, somewhere about there. And then S and Z. And importantly, we need this to be longer in the Z axis. This is probably overkill, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference. 
So let's go there. But as long as we've got this longer than we need, that's fine. Then same thing, go into whatever mode, control and R and bring in a load of edge loops. I'm gonna go somewhere there-ish. I think that's a similar sort of amount. And now what's interesting is we're actually gonna set this up at this point. So if you wanted to have these parts extruded inwards like I did on the second version, you can do. I'm gonna do it this way because I prefer it and I think it's also a little bit harder so it demonstrates it quite well. Let's just Alt and E and extrude faces along normals and extrude those in a bit. So we've got the start of our chevrons. We just need to start getting everything angled. And to do that, we need to know a couple of tricks. So I'm just gonna isolate this. And firstly, we're gonna go into face mode. I'm gonna select the face at the top and the bottom and we'll X and delete out those faces. I should note, while I'm showing this on Blender, you could do this same sort of chevron in any 3D design program. It's just, well, this is a Blender channel. Largely, I prefer Blender. Now, what we need to do is set up these so that we move everything basically up one row. You'll see what I mean as I do it. But that can be annoying because, well, for each vertex, we've got to effectively break these faces apart along these edges, just along here. So there's actually quite an easy way to do this. You'll notice I'm not using any add-ons to do this, whereas the other one, even then, we needed machine tools. Not that that's a particularly pricey add-on, but this will require nothing. What we're going to use is a function called vertex rip. If I come to the side and hit V, you can see what this does. It just rips everything away from the other side. Now, there's an important thing about vertex ripping. Whatever side I have my mouse on, it will keep that side's face selected or those vertices selected. What I mean by that is, you'll see if I select here, I've now got the ones on the right selected because my mouse was on the right. If I put my mouse on the left, notice I've just undone this, and then hit V, it keeps the ones on the left selected. So we're going to use that to our advantage. We want to keep the ones on the left selected, so I'm just going to press V, and then I'm going to right click and that just brings everything back, but notice they're still separated. Then I'm going to use, again, something included in Blender for a while now, something called Snap Base. And we're going to come so we can see two lines. I'm going to hit G, so I'm moving it, and then I'm going to hit B to activate Snap Base. Now this will allow me to snap to things that I've told Blender to snap to. And I do that, let's just escape out of this, up here, and we need to have the vertices selectable. Now, you can have more. If you hold down Shift, it can snap to vertices, edges, and faces. That's what I generally keep it snapping to. But for this, you only really need vertex. That's all we're going to be snapping to. So G again, B. I'm going to select that bottom vertex there and then just drag it up to the one that's above it. And you can see how we're getting this chevron. I'm going to move round a row. Alt click there, bring my mouse to the left. V again to root the vertex, right click, you can also click escape, G, B, down there, up to here. Same again, Alt click, V, escape, G, B, there, drag it up, done. And finally this one, V, escape, G, B, that vertex up to there, and you can see what we've got. So this chevron, and this is why this is superior in my mind, is actually more of a spiral that keeps going around. Now this gives us a load of really big benefits. I will discuss them in a second, but first we need to fix this horrible stuff at the bottom. We, we needed to keep this extra bit of length because we get this well spiky sort of crowny shape at the top and we need to add a face there. So all I'm gonna do is Shift A, Mesh, and bring in a cube. Let's just scale that up. G, that's somewhere here, and we want to delete this out. Now, this might have an issue. Shift click, and then Control and minus, and actually, no, it's worked out okay. But we are gonna have another problem to solve in a second, so let's just Shift and D that down to create another one. Let's come out of isolation mode. Uh, we want it somewhere there, and Shift click, Control and minus, and then we've got that good to go. That's just H to hide that, and H to hide that. Now. Just on these modifiers, do note that I've got a difference modifier and I'm in exact. This will probably work with float as well, though no, it's starting to cause some issues. So exact is better, manifold definitely won't work because this is not a manifold shape. Speaking of which, we do have an issue still left. If I go into vertex mode, these vertices are still 
not connected to each other. We need to fix that. Now, we've got two options. We could do this destructively, in which case I'm just going to A, M, and merge by distance, and that will basically join all the vertices on top of each other together. Or I can do it non-destructively, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to come over here, add in a new modifier. I want a weld modifier. And this does exactly the same thing. So at the moment, all of these vertices are now being welded together. It's exactly the same process. And if I apply all this, this will be a solid object. Now, the reason I want to do this non-destructively is just in case, let's just shift and D and bring this over. Oh, let's just go somewhere here. I might realize that I need this to be wider. Let's go into vertex mode, select all these, and then G and then Y that somewhere to, let's say here. And if I do that, suddenly this doesn't look as good. It's not at 45 degrees. It doesn't really match up, though it's not too bad. But what we can do is if we make this wider, because we've still got everything not selected, I can come to this edge, oops, edge mode, or vertex mode, and I could choose to move these up further. So I could just GB there, and then move this up an extra layer, and that gets a better chevron in this instance. It's looking a bit better. So that's an option. That's why I'm keeping this here. Let's just delete that out now. I don't care about it, but I just wanted to demonstrate that. It allows us to modify it later without having to rip all the vertices again. So once again, I've put this in the classic chevron colors, and I just want to talk about why I think this is superior as a chevron. Now, firstly, from a 3D printing point of view, we just don't have any corners. Well, we do have corners, but this corner here is actually supported by the material coming up on this side, which means we actually don't need any supports on this. As long as I don't angle this really extremely, and especially if I keep it vertically like this, this won't need supporting. Oh, I've just seen a couple of faces that I haven't assigned. Let's just come back there hit and assign them. Anyway, so this is gonna be much better for 3D printing. It's gonna keep a cleaner surface and that's gonna make it easier to paint. Next, all of these sections are the same thickness on all sides. So this suddenly, so here is the same as here, but it is also the same as here. And that's what we want. We don't want this difference in thickness that sort of catches our eye. Finally, there's no horizontal surfaces. And actually, even if I come and look at this at like an angle here, this looks great. I can still see the chevrons. And that's true all the way around. So this is a wonderful chevron as far as I'm concerned. It looks great from whatever angle you look at. So anyway, that's how to do it. It's quite a simple technique as soon as you know about vertex ripping and snap base. But I thought it'd be a nice thing to share. But more importantly, whatever you're doing, if you're creating a chevron, I think this is the way to go. And even if you're not doing it for 3D design purposes, it's probably the way to do it if you're painting it as well. So do let me know what you think of this in the comment section. Is this something you might try or is it just not really worth bothering trying to model this in 3D in your opinion? You'll just paint it because it doesn't take particularly long to do. Do let me know if you like the idea of the spiral. But also, I've only been thinking about this very briefly. Do let me know if you think you've got a better way of doing this. I did try this once by just making one section and arraying it up. But actually, it turned out to be less efficient than just doing it this way because you still had to do the same amount of vertex ripping. You then just had to put an array as well. And it became less easy to modify afterwards. So I personally think this is the best way to do it at this point. But I'm very happy to hear otherwise. I just wanted to say again, thank you very much to Ben. I really appreciate you coming to me with this idea about this spiral chevron. Hadn't really considered it very much and you were very patient with me being an absolute moron. If you're interested in checking out this file, it is available at the 3D design tier level on the Patreon. And the Patreon is the best way to help support the channel. I know it's only a few dollars a month and it might not mean much to you, but for me, it is the thing that gives me the time to create these videos. I hope to see you in the next one and have a great day.